welcome back to the channel. We're going to start off today taking some drastic action in the polytunnel. We are only 35 days away from our first frost date here in Staffordshire. I'm not really ready to admit that it's the end of summer yet, but obviously it is. It's time to take drastic action for those tomatoes to see if we can get them to ripen before we do get those first frosts. So I'm going to take off any new side shoots and leaders that it keeps trying to send out since I've topped them and any new flowers. They are not going to ripen now before the end of the season. So we need these plants to concentrate their energy on ripening the big fruit that they've already set. Now this does seem really rather brutal to these poor plants, but can you see this stem here? It's not going to do anything. These flowers are not going to have time to make fruit. So it's just wasting its energy trying to do something with them. Taking off a lot of this foliage is also going to reduce my risk of late blight. It's also trying to put new leaders up all of the time. They are pretty high maintenance tomatoes, aren't they? More new flowers being set here. Well, that looks pretty drastic now, doesn't it? I do hope it works. Some of the tomatoes, like this San Mazzano here, are insistent on trying to send up new shoots from the bottom as well. I have to keep cutting off. We've done that all year, to be fair. Now, obviously, your first frost date could be very different to mine. And therefore, this could be far too early for you to be taking the same kind of action with yours. So the advice is always to check your own first and last frost dates out. There's plenty of websites you can do that by. I'll link one in the description, actually. And just put in your location and it'll give you a rough idea of first and last frost dates for your area. And it's October the 15th for us here as our first frost date. And actually that really shocked me last year. I thought, no way do we have frost that early. And we had our first frost and it was the only frost for weeks on end on October the 15th. Made it around to the last one. Can't say as I enjoy this job. It just feels so brutal and maybe I have been overly harsh I don't know once you start you get a bit snap happy finished it looks very different in here now rather rather brutal especially for these ones in the middle did I cut off a few stems that I didn't want to cut off yes absolutely a few mistakes were made here but on the whole I'm happy that I think I've given them a really good chance of ripening now before the end of the season. Another reason to be removing the foliage off of these tomato plants was to get some light in the floor of the polytunnel so that I could start to interplant my autumn and winter crops in here. These Lolo Rosso lettuces were actually destined to be put out on the plot, but our long range forecast has been saying four or five degrees this weekend overnight for quite some time. And I keep thinking, oh, we're bordering on frost territory there, aren't we? Not far away from it. So I've decided that these lettuces for autumn can go in here. And then what I'm going to do next is start sowing my actual winter crops in the greenhouses. And I'll be bringing some winter lettuces in here later on through the season. First thing first though, how did I miss all of these shoots? These are not the healthiest looking lettuces. They didn't enjoy being watered, so hopefully they'll be okay. But they're in, so they've got two choices, haven't they? It's kind of do or die. And then while I was in the greenhouse, I found these three Savoy cabbage seedlings that were very much languishing in there. So I'm planting them out. Not sure if it's the right season or place to put Savoy cabbages themselves, but they're in here. Again, they've got two choices, haven't they? Better than leaving them in the greenhouse. 
you will notice that slugs have now discovered my marigold so I'll pull a few of those out in fact they're all kind of past their best now but they were absolutely beautiful while they really lasted and while I'm in here I think it's time to harvest this oh it has it's dropped off look at that now that is the biggest melon of the season wow <laughs> all that smell these are definitely on the list again to grow next year. This is the Arava F1. Can't save the seeds from this one because obviously they are a hybrid. But I'm absolutely thrilled with them, really thrilled. And I was really excited to see Ali from the right pear plot with her sugar baby watermelon. And she has promised to send me some seeds. So I'd love to try those next year. Looking forward to that as well. I've got these Minnesota midgets and I'm really not sure when they're ripe. I know they're getting there, but I can't smell melon on these yet. And do you remember the new loofah that I showed you that had been pollinated just a couple of weeks ago? Look at the size of that now. just give it all a quick chop over because that does help it to break down a lot quicker which for me is really really important because I plan on moving these compost bins this winter so if I give it a chop down now and it can start breaking down as we get into winter and I move these into their new home then obviously it's kind of turning it over by putting it into its new position I'm hoping that will really speed it up I'll carry on and do this and then I'll meet you back in the greenhouse where I'll show you what I'm sowing now for my winter crops. Try to place on the windowsill there. It's going to smell nice in here while I'm sewing. Now before I actually do start the sewing I need to clear out the peppers that are in here. All but one of them are done now for the season so it makes no sense keeping them so I'm going to get them cleared out first make a bit of room. This one the long yellow bullhorn does have one more left on it. Oh no it doesn't. Well, I'm truly munched. I feel like everything's munching my crops at the moment. Do you feel a bit like that with yours? Pests seem to be getting worse as the season goes on, not better. I might be able to salvage a little bit of it though. As you can see, there's nothing else now on this plant. This one has already died back. This one is dying back. There's a couple of very overripe jalapenos on here largely because no one liked them. This one's died back. This one on the end does have a few later set fruit, so I'm gonna leave this one in for a bit. Cleared all that out, I am now ready to get sewing. And the first things that I'm going to sew in September to overwinter are onions. So I have several varieties here. I have the Japanese Sanshui onion. I don't know if I've pronounced that correctly. I also have purple lilia spring onions, long white ishikuras, and then finally I have these which are exhibition onions. These are from Premier Seeds. And packet isn't quite sealed right at the top so I've already been on hands and knees in my summer room picking these seeds up because I tipped the packet upside down and out they fell. So obviously I'm growing these because I'm going to try and enter a few shows again next year so I'd like to grow some bigger onions. It says you can sow these 
late summer, early autumn, or you start again sort of in the early new year. So what I'm going to do is try them now, see how they overwinter, and then obviously I've got a backup crop that I can sow again in January if need be. I'm going to be sowing these overwintering onions in these seed trays. These are from Container Wise. These are 77 cell seed trays. And these were recommended to me by Pammy from Garden of Weed and Allotment. So thank you, Pammy. I did get some. And thank you to my sister because she actually ordered them for me. I did pay her, but she ordered them. These look like really sturdy and I'll be able to just get one seed in each cell. That's my hope so that I don't have that horrendous job of pricking out onions because I absolutely hated doing that early this year when I did the Boxing Day onion. I broadcast sowed those ones and I absolutely hated it. So I'm going to be sowing individually and they can stay in here hopefully until they need to be transferred into something a bit bigger. And then I'll just be able to push them out and plop them into something else. So that should be a lot easier. You might remember from last winter that I go for a bit of tough love and I'm not very good at sieving the compost first. Anything that I would later direct sow in the ground, and onions is something that I would direct sow in the ground. I don't sieve the ground, so I think to myself, is it really necessary to sieve them in these cell trays? Right, I'll just push these down. The first thing I'm gonna sow are the Ishikuri long white spring onions. Now I've just said that I'm going to sow them one at a time. I actually probably will multi-sow these. Oh, you never know whether they're going to be directly in the bottom of the packet or whether they're going to be in another packet. These ones are directly in the bottom of the packet. I'll just pop a few in each one. Now, whilst I've just said I'm not going to sieve the compost to put them in the trays, and that's true, I will just sieve what I put on top of them just to help them coming up. Oh no, now I've got to find a pen that works because it's been that long since I've used a marker. There you go. Long white Ishi Kura. And the date today is the 9th of the 9th. So that's those done. Next ones are these purple Lilia spring onions. Put the extras back in. There. Just cover these ones again here so I still have 35 cells here at the top so I think I'm going to sow the exhibition onions in the top here because I'll be able to move them out into something bigger later on but these are definitely ones that I'm trying to only sow one in each cell And now I can set them down in there. Next up are the Centuri onions. Again, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Everyone raves about these, so I'm going to give them a go for next season. I'm determined not to use sets for next year's onions. Now, I did want to sow some brassicas today as well, but wouldn't you believe it? The only box that I can't find in the seed cell thing is my brassica one. Don't know what I've done with it, so I'll have to have a better look for that. But I do plan on sowing some spring 
cabbages. All of my spring cabbages bolted this year didn't have a single one. Now Danny from the Grow Up channel has recommended a variety called April, so I might just look those up and order those just in case I can't find what I've done with this little container. No idea. But I am going to sow some mustard leaves and some winter density lettuce. Now I direct sowed these last year in the polytunnel and they were nice to add to dishes all winter through but obviously I've got quite a lot of crops still in the polytunnel so I will sow these in seed cells and then when the tomatoes are out I might add some more in there afterwards but it'll just give me a little bit of a head start. First up are these mustards actually. These ones say to sow in August but this one does say sow in September, October, November so I will be sowing these mustards instead. I'm going to use the grow up dibber that I got from Danny at Mulvern in May. And lots of us are going to be at Malvern Autumn Show again in a couple of weeks' time. If you see any of us there, please do pop over and say hello to us all. I'm sure there's going to be a bit of a meet-up at some point. Ooh. I seem to remember that these are pretty indestructible, so hopefully they will come up nicely for me. So that's the mustard. And then in this one... It's time for the winter density lettuce. Ooh, these are much bigger seeds. Look, they look more like proper flower seeds, don't they? A couple in each one. them down, make them good contact with the soil and give these both a good watering. I nearly forgot to sow these which is the radicchio so I'm going to get those sown. I didn't really get to eat it last year because it never sort of set ahead. I kept waiting for it to set ahead and then nothing happened and then they all just bolted and they weren't particularly very nice. They were very, I know it's bitter anyway but it was really bitter so I'd like to try them again to know whether that's just how they are and therefore I don't like radicchio or whether it was just because of how they bolted. I'm pretty sure that I must have had radicchio in bought packets of salads, which I haven't bought any of those this year. Isn't that amazing? Whilst I'll never be 100% fully self-sufficient, to think that you can be self-sufficient in salad crops or self-sufficient in onions or self-sufficient in carrots, you know, just one or two things but even just one thing would make so much difference, wouldn't it? To just say, I don't buy that anymore, I grow my own. It doesn't have to be a huge, great big plot. It could just be one tub of something you grow each year. Although I'm pretty certain that if my model is anything to go by, once you start growing something, you become totally addicted to it and you have to keep going. I feel a bit more organised now. I've been so late, we've had so much going on in the family in the month of August that I do feel like I'm really behind in sowing my autumn and winter crops. But hopefully this is going to work and it's not too late. So if you've forgotten to sow some of yours, get and do it now. Now before I just tidy away, I will just do another little pepper harvest. Look at that. That's Morris again, the one that I grew from Morrison's bell pepper. These are my first starfish reds. Got a few on here. Liking those. Now these little chilies here are the fadas. You really know what you're supposed to do with chilies quite so little. But it is laden with them. Oh, they pull off easy enough. I'm guessing that these could all go into the dehydrator and I don't know how well you can make these out in this corner but these are my Buena Malatas now I've had loads off of these absolutely loads off of it they are going to be on my list next year this variegated leaf one here is Jalapeno Tiger these aren't very big chilies.
This one here is the Sugar Rush Long Peach. There you go. There's plenty more on it, but not turned yet. This one here is supposed to be Joe's Long KN, but they don't look like it said they were going to be on the seed packet. I've just spotted hiding down here amongst all of this foliage a pepper that I've missed. Look at that. That's a Toro Rosso. Wow. <laughs> I've also got quite a few of these orange habaneros growing now. I think this is called Bondama Jacks. Yep, Bondama Jacks. These are the hottest ones that I've got growing. Maybe I won't take them in all at the same time though. Better take those ones in separately so I don't mix up the really hot ones with all of the others. But I can make a habanero sauce with those, can't I? Habanero sauce sounds like something I've heard of. No idea really, but that's the plan. Bought a dehydrator. I'm going to go and try and make some powders or sauces or things because I do use a lot of chilli powder. All that remains to be done is to get these chilli plants chopped up and put in the compost heap. That's a lot of compost materials we've gotten today. Those compost bins are all going to be full soon, aren't they? As we get to the end of the season and we start emptying everything out. Oh wow, I can't cut that. I need my better secateurs. Where are they? That's better. This is when all that jute string I was using starts annoying me. That's one. I'm adding the soil from these chilli and pepper plants into the compost because I've just added quite a lot of green so this will be some nice browns for me and the roots will rot down and give me some fibrous sort of structure to it as well. So before it gets dark I'll just run along and get that done and I will catch you in the next video. Look after yourselves, bye!